Sharing your faith with an unbeliever can be one of the most intimidating and daunting experiences for any believer, no matter how long or short you have been a Christian. So in this video, I want to give you seven very practical tips and strategies for how you can share your faith with any unbeliever. That's coming up today on The Beat. Hey, my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. If you want a free ebook, click the link in the description box below. And if you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notification so you won't miss a beat. Okay, so I'm not gonna waste your time. Here are seven very practical tips and strategies for how you can share your faith with an unbeliever because let's face it, that along with making disciples is the very reason why Jesus left us here. And tip number one is to understand that we cannot save anyone, but only God can. As a matter of fact, Ephesians chapter two, verse one says, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked. And so Paul here is describing our previous condition before we came to Christ. And he uses this word dead. And so I want you to just imagine for just a moment, if you were to go down to the local cemetery and you were to provide the most clear, the clearest, uh, most convincing proof and description of Christianity and just you laid out the gospel very clearly. The sad reality is that no one in that cemetery would even be able to comprehend and understand a word that is coming out of your mouth. Why? Because they are dead. They are unable to respond to anything that you are saying. Paul says in the same way before we came to Christ, we were dead. We were unable to respond to anything spiritually. So if someone doesn't get saved whenever you share your faith, don't blame yourself. Don't think that you weren't prepared. It could very well be that God has not quickened that person's heart yet, and their heart is very hardened towards the things of God, and it's only when God quickens their heart when they will be able to respond to whatever you are saying. So. Number one, know that you and I cannot save anybody. It has to be a work of God. Okay, tip number two before we get to the really, really good ones is know the gospel. Now, I know that seems very, very obvious, but you would be surprised at how many Christians do not understand very clearly what the gospel actually is and what it means and what exactly Christ has done for us because there is nothing worse than someone being ready to become a Christian and they raise their hand and say, hey, okay, I get it, man. Sign me up. I'm ready to be a follower of Jesus Christ. How do I do that? And the person telling them about Christ doesn't even know how to walk them through the basic plan of salvation and explain to them exactly what the gospel is. Now, if you are unclear about what the gospel is, I just did a video that describes very clearly exactly what the gospel is. I'm gonna put a link in the description and I'm gonna put a card somewhere up on the screen so you can watch that video. Okay, tip number three, and this is huge. You have to build relationships over time. As a matter of fact, Paul says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. And so Paul here is using an analogy from gardening to help us understand the process of salvation. In other words, it may or may not happen right away. The person that you're talking to, they may or may not be ready right then and there to give up everything in their old life and just simply follow Christ. It may take some time. And so Paul says, hey, sometimes you may be the person that just plants the seeds. Other times you may be that person that has to water those seeds and that may take a lot of time. You may have to spend time with that person to try to get to know them and then Ultimately, as I said in point one, it's God that gives the increase. Now, how exactly should we go about doing this? Well, first tip I want to give you is to listen to them, right? You know, uh, somebody told me a long time ago that we have two ears and only one mouth for a reason because we're supposed to listen twice as much as we speak. And so the idea here is that you're listening to them, trying to gather up information, just getting to know them. What are their life experiences? What are their pain points? 
Are there some things that happened to them in their life, whether it's things at church or maybe they were disappointed in God or maybe they grew up in church, but something happened along the way that turned them away from God and now they're in this place where they don't believe in God. So the more you listen, the more you're able to get an idea of their worldview, where they're coming from, and ultimately the more you listen, the Holy Spirit is going to craft a tailor-made uh, uh, process, if you will, to try to share your faith with this person as opposed to just simply doing the same cookie cutter experience or or same cookie cutter strategy, if you will, for every single person that you meet. And then the second thing you want to do is ask them questions like take a genuine interest in their life so that they will know that you're not just not just trying to just get another notch in your belt as another convert, but you really do want to get to know them. You really want to develop a relationship with them and you want to be friends with them because over time that is going to build trust. And after you put the time in, you're building trust. And after you build the trust, then you're able to share truth with this person. And not only that, it will allow you to see when the right time is for you to share the gospel because you've been tracking with this person for some time and God will tell you exactly when their heart is ripe and ready to hear the truth. Okay, number four is huge. Be ready to help them overcome the objections that they may have about the Christian faith. As a matter of fact, 1 Peter 3, 15, one of my favorite verses in the New Testament, it says this, and if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Now, some people that you meet just want to argue with you, and I'm going to talk about that in the next point, but some people that you meet, they are genuinely interested in the Christian faith. Like they have real questions that if they could somehow get answers to these questions, it very well might help them overcome some of the objections that they have to the Christian faith. Now, this list of questions that I'm going to give you is by no way exhaustive, but I think that these are some questions that if you are a believer ready to share your faith, you should be at any time locked and loaded and ready to give an answer to these basic questions. Question number one is, why does God allow evil in the world? That's a question that a lot of people ask. They cannot seem to co to to, uh, to be able to reconcile, if you will, God being good, but yet there is evil as well. The second question you want to be ready to answer is, why is Christ and Christianity the only way to get to heaven? I mean, that is a genuine question that a non-believer or a seeker might have. The third question is, how can God be both three and one? I mean, this doesn't make sense. I thought that Christianity was a monotheistic religion, and now you guys are talking about this trinity and all of that. Can you help me understand that? Question number four, how can the Bible be written by God whenever it was written by men? And if that's the case, aren't there errors in it? I mean, what about the translations that we have? Can we really trust those? How do we know that the Bible that we have today is really the word of God and it's not just something that was part of a conspiracy theory that was written by man? And then another question that you may want to be ready to answer is, how do we know that Jesus Christ ever lived? And if he lived, how do we know that he indeed rose from the dead? And so here are just a few questions that people typically ask whenever they have objections to the Christian faith, that it would be in your best interest to have answers ready for these questions. Okay, tip number five is very important. Whenever you are sharing your faith with an unbeliever, don't debate them. Once again, 1 Peter 3.15 says, and if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it, but do this in a gentle and respectful way. So this is huge. Just, just pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say. Some of the people that you meet and come in contact with are genuinely going to be interested in wanting to understand what Christianity is all about. But there is another group of people out there that they're not really genuinely seeking truth. All they're trying to do is try to trap you and try to cause you to have doubt about what you believe and they're not really interested in learning about Christianity. These are the types of people that the Spirit of God quickly in that conversation should lead you to go in a different direction because their heart is still hardened towards the things of the of, of God's word, hardened towards the things of truth, and they're not in a position, no matter how 
convincing your argument is they're not in a position to receive the truth. Okay, tip number six, be ready to share your personal testimony. Now I say this with some caution because for many Christians, this is about as far as we get in terms of sharing our faith. We say, well, you know what? I don't really know anything. I don't know the Bible. I don't know any truth. I don't know any scriptures. I don't know anything. I don't even know how to tell you about what the gospel is, but I just know what God did for me and I know how God changed my life. That is very important. There should be some life change that you should be able to tell someone else uh, whenever they're asking you about why you are a believer. But this alone is not enough oftentimes to 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 adequately share your faith with someone because there are many religious systems throughout the world that boast and make claims that people's lives have been changed. I mean, the person you're talking to could say, yeah, that's great, but I have a friend who just became a Muslim and they follow the rules and laws of Islam and all the teachings of Islam and their life has been changed too. So what makes Christianity any different? So you should be ready to share your testimony, but don't just rely on testimony. You must also have some truth along with your testimony. And then the seventh and final tip might be the most important one, and that is this. Trust God, the Holy Spirit, to lead and guide you throughout the entire process of you sharing your faith. One of my favorite scriptures is Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. We call it the Great Commission, and this is the last thing that Jesus said. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. Now watch this and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. My friend, remember when you share your faith, Jesus is with you. You are not by yourself. He has left the Holy Spirit to live and reside in you, to guide you and lead you and prompt you and give you the words to say and bring the things back to your remembrance so that whenever you're sharing your faith and you're nervous and you don't know what to say, God, the Holy Spirit, trust him. Spend some time in prayer beforehand, asking God to lead you and give you wisdom and give you insight and to get your mind right so that whenever you get into that conversation and more importantly, whenever you get into that long-term relationship with that unbeliever, the Spirit of God will be leading you in that relationship so that hopefully, ultimately one day, they can become a believer in Christ. So my friend, I hope these seven tips will make it easier for you to share your faith the next time you come across someone who doesn't believe in Christ. Remember this, it may or may not happen right away. If it does, great. If it doesn't, make sure you reach out and build a relationship with them because you may be the person that not just plants the seed, but God may want you to water it and ultimately God is gonna give the growth. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.